Butovoch, welcome to tonight's shear, Motzer Shabbos, Pashas Truma. My apologies for those who didn't get the message about the uh, delayed time of being 8.30, but uh, if you're not on my mailing list, so if you would send me an email, I'll include you on the mailing list, and then you'll be informed in good time of changes of time. So let's go straight to our shear, and so something which is Pasha Sashavua. The so actually Baruch Hashem making Hasana, and in preparation for the Hasana, I was reading, learning memorim of the Alter Rebbe in the Siddur, which talks about. Preparations for the chasana, about the brochas of the chasana, etc. And there I found something very interesting, which connected to something which has been bothering me for many years. So we're looking here at a Gemara Sukkah. The Gemara Sukkah Davdalad, end of some base, tells us, it says in the Mishnah that if the Sukkah is less than 10 Tfokim high, then it's not valid. It has the minimum height of 10 Tfokim. So where does the number of ten tefachim come from? Says the Gemara Itmar says Rav and Rabbi Chanino and Rabbi Yochanan and Rabbi Chavivo, etc. We're going to in all the details. He says the following: Oroin Tisha. The Oroin was one and a half amos tall. So an amo being six tefachim, so one and a half times six equals nine. So the Oroin stands nine tefachim high. And the lid of the oren is the kapoires, that's a tefach thick. And the Gemara later discusses where do they get this number from. Meanwhile, so nine and one equals ten. Harikan asor. So here we have the, the height of the oren. In other words, the space between where the kruvim are is ten him above the ground. The Ebishter says, I will noyadati, I will meet with you. The word moyed, like oyel moyed, means a tent of meeting. I will meet with you there. And I will speak to you from above the kapoyres, from above this lid of the oren. The shkina never came down into this world, neither did Moshe and Eliyahu go out of this world. And it goes into discussion. By the way, if someone can give me a marimokim, where the Rebbe explained what he emphasized so many times, so I'll be I'd appreciate it, and we'll share with it with the Oilam the next uh, next year. Upon him, they have the idea that there's the world, and then there is the Kivyochel, the presence of the Shekhinah, and this is the separation, and so the measurement of Elam Hazer is up to ten Tfokim. That seems to be the gist of the Gemara. However, you understand it exactly. Later, the Gemara goes backtracks on this and says it's Halach Lameshim Sinai. But meanwhile, we have this Gemara, that the source of the height of ten Tfokim to define to define the height of a sukkah, and then you have the toysus underneath, which you have on the on the which says, mm -hmm. So the source of the tent for him height to define the Rosh Yochid is also taken from the orange. That's what Toysus says. That the Oren is it's placed in the Kodesh Kadoshim. The Kodesh Kadoshim stands ten for ten amas high. So what's the point of saying that the Oren is a Rishosayochid or something when it's in a Rishosayochid in any case? That's what was bothering me for years. My suggestion was that the Oren is a Gashmi and above is Ruchni, is spiritual and is a physical. And so that's that's the idea that within the tent of is the physical world, and above the tent of is the spiritual world. But meanwhile, I see here in this mimer in the Alter Rebbe Siddur. Now that is in the Siddur Imdach, Siddur Tvil's Kalashana, 
After Bircha Samozoin, then there are several Mamorim, quite a few. Mamorim, which the Alter Rebbe said, most of them were said at Chasanus. This was said at the Chasan of Tzemach Tzedek. And he's discussing there about Kos Shabroch, a beautiful mimer. And so he has here the following. That he says, you have the Kois and the wine. So you have Teure, you have Halocha, and you have the application. So let's say you have a Halocha, which is talking about an ox which gored a, a cow. So that is a, an application. In it, there is a Seichel. So the Seichel is like the wine, and the the application, the case in, in hand, that is the cup. That's, that's part of the discussion there. So meanwhile, let's come to keep to our point. So the Alter Rebbe says the following. There are many halochas which we don't have a clear explanation in Alpinigla. Kamoi b'yuchas Shabbos. Halocha ravachas is a well-known halocha that Rishos HaYochid goes up till the heaven. Oy le'ad l'rokia. Rishos HaRabim the public domain the aim was their time nigla. The Alter Rebbe says that there's no clear, op evident reason, a logical reason why the Cheshbon of Tentvoch. Avol al derech nister. But in, in the way of Kabbalah, Siddhas, hatam mevoyer al pikisve ariza. This is well explained in the reading writings of the Arizal, which means the writings mostly of his Talmudim. We have very little which the Arizal himself wrote. Never mind. The Rishusa Yochid, who Oilama Silus. Yochid means there's only one unity, uniqueness. Oilama Silus, that's the level of Atsilus, where the word Atsilus means Eitzel, it's close. It also means perhaps endowing, giving, but it, it's, a, it's a level where of, of closeness. And Lafisha Yuchud Oiren Sov Baruch Benet Solim, Ba'iris Vekalim. There, there is a unity be, with, between the divine, infinite light, and the beings in the level of Atzilus, namely the Oiris and the Kalim. And then, then familiar, the Loshim, which is brought in Tanya also, Ihu Vechayoichad, Ihu Vechamoichad. So one of the explanations is, is referring to the Oiris and the Kalim. We're not going to go hold beer in Chsidus, but meanwhile, in Oilam Atzilus, there's an Oilam of oneness. And then he adds another word. Why is there the oneness with Hashem on the level of Atzilus, but not lower? Mipnesha hakav v'chut shel oyrin sof meir ba'atzilus. Because of the line and the thread of divine, of the infinite light, radiates in Atzilus. Just uh, forgive me, I think it's a lot of but just to uh, explain this in the Kitzer, you have the, the, the way it's described in the beginning of Eitz Chaim, the Tzimtzum and the Oyerponui, and there is a uh, lack of clarity, and then there's a pencil of light. And that pencil of light comes down, that the, after the Tzimtzum, there's a pencil of light. That pencil of light, that oil, that Kav, the Chut, continues all the way until Atzilus, inclusive, and then between Atsilas and subsequent Oilamas, Yasiya, sorry, there is a parasol, there's a uh, there's a curtain, there's a barrier. So in Atsilas, there's still the khut, the kava khut of Oirinsov. And therefore, beautiful, Al Rebbe says, Oila Adl Rokia. When we say Rishusa Yochid, Oila Adl Rokia, this means that there is this light which is all the way up, from Atzilus, all the way up. That means that Rishus HaYochid Oyla Adla Rakia. In Nigla, you could say, you know, Rishus HaYochid Ein Lo Gvul. Adla Rakia is because it's it's the Kav which is connecting all the way up. At Shoy Rish Kolam, Akifim Bechines Atzma Seinso, Biyach Atichoy, etc. Masha'in Kein, but after Atzilus, lower than Atzilus, there's a Pargoid and a Parso. There's a barrier, a curtain, a drape, whatever, which is interfering, inter, inter, intervening between Atsilus and Bria. And Kavuchut, the Kavuchut, the Kav Oyen Sof, there is the end of the Kav, so to speak, at that point. And then into Oyen Sof, Bia is called Alma de Prudor, the worlds of separation. 
So this is so. When, meanwhile, we've appreciated that the lotion Rishus Hayochid Eila Adler Rokia in Kabbalah it means that there is this hotline, this thread of light, pencil of light, all Adler Rokia, all the way to Mile. And then you have lower than that is Eila Mizbia Tura De Prudo, and he uses it says Eila Ad Rak Ad Asorot Fochim. Neged Yid Kisri Tato in the Noiga. He says the ten Tvochim correspond to the ten crowns of Noiga, and he doesn't explain any more. So I don't have the explanation why the after ten, it's why etc. But meanwhile, we have here a deeper explanation of the idea of the separation of Shusha Yochin Shusha which seems to tie in with what I said before that the Oroin and the Kapoiris, as exalted as they were, they were still Gashmias, and therefore they are. Uh, in this, the Asara Tvochim of, of, of Gashmi is Turi de Pruda, and higher than that is is uh, is connected all the way up. Just want to th throw in one more Gedan, which you're learning in this Maimer. The Maimer starts off with a story of the famous Tana who is dancing at the Hasnas. But he's juggling Hadassim, he's juggling three Hadassim. And then it says that when the other Chachomim, they were, they were not so impressed with his antics and they would say that you are embarrassing us with your your entertaining later when he passed away say the Gemara says that there was a pillar of light a muda denura pillar of flame all the way up and then they are uh, the his colleagues said ahanalei Three explanations. One said Shtuse, his his uh, like his uh, child, his foolish behavior. Some say Shitse means the reeds of Hodos, like a, a, a reed is a Shito. Some say or uh, Shetise, sorry. Another says Shitse, he's a his policy. They saw him, and the way he explains in the Maimer, he was such an exalted person that he could be in Oilam Haze. And be connected all the way to Miley. He had Mochen de Gadlus. So whilst he was dancing at the Chasnes, he was also at the same time connected to Miley. Now we have, the Alter Rebbe doesn't spell this out, but it makes sense that why he has this Amur de Danur, why he has this column of light going all the way up. Because this is a whole word here. Olam, if you, in Olam Silas, you got this Ola Adler Akia. And therefore, when he was Nifter, so you had here this Amur de Danur, Ola Adler Akia. That's just lehoisiv. Right, let's go on. That was Yishmaki uh, Inyan, Lav Davke Lahalocha. But uh, Alter Rebbe says that in Al Nigla there is no hex explanation. Okay. Okay. Last Sunday, I was on the train going to Golders Green, and by Hashgacha Pratis, I met a an old acquaintance. From Manchester, by the name of Rabbi Huda Leib Whitler. And we were chatting a little bit. I told him, he asked me about the project I've been involved. I told him about the Siddur. And he tells me, Oh, have you ever looked into the difference between in Nusr? Some Nisidurim have Tif Eres, Eclil Tif Eres, Beration or Sato Loi. Whereas mo most Sidurim don't have it. Where does that innovation come from? So, I admit that I did not hadn't I hadn't noticed this. Kivyochel, when I worked I worked on the Siddur, I did do comparisons of Nusach, and yet somehow this didn't this eluded me. And so I was very interested, came back home and did some homework. And what I discovered is that the this is ad addressed by Rabbi Yaakov Emden. To explain to you, Rabbi Yaakov Emden, he prints his Siddur. I think it's Tov Kuf Gimel, two years before the Alter Rebbe is born. Rabbi Yaakov Emden spent enormous effort in analyzing and crystallizing the Nusach HaSehat I mentioned this in the past. He had a contemporary called Rabbi Shlomo Zalman Hanna, and they have major polemics, and they are published. Well, you have the Sefer for Rabbi Yaakov Emden called Luach Eresh. But, but meanwhile, he published a Siddur, and in his Siddur, he makes he addresses this. I want to share that with you. 
before doing so, I'm showing you on the upper um, part of this screen two all I know I've, at first I looked in many sidurim and it's all just nosato without nosato loy. As you can see here on the right um, um, clip, there is a siddur printed in Sheen Pei Gimel, and it's an Ashkenaz siddur, and it has Nefelz Nosato. But on then, on Friday, I managed to find a siddur published Top Ein Gimel, that's also um, uh, 50 years before the Alter Rebbe is born, approximately. And that's also a printed in Berlin, and it has here Nosato Loi. But then now let's read what Rabbi Yagib Emden tells us. Nosato loy, kein hanusuch shel Ashkenazim. As I say, I looked to many old Ashkenazi sidurim from 100 years before him and I couldn't find, but finally I found one. The im omnom loy, the word loy seems to be superfluous. And therefore I wasn't accustomed to say that word. And indeed the nusuch hasfardim, which I confirm is true, is without the word loy. And nevertheless, I didn't allow myself to erase it. Veloyoid, not only that, but now I think it is correct. And I'm going to stop here for a moment and just look at the verse, the, the phrase here. The Yismach Moshe Bematnas Chelkoi. Moshe will rejoice with the gift which is given to his, for his, his portion. Ki Eved Nemon Korosoloi. Because you have referred to him, you have called him, titled him, a devoted servant. Khalilti Eres, a, a crown of glory, Beroishoi on his head, Nosatolo, you have given to him. Beomde Lefonechel Has Sinai, when he stood before you at Mount Sinai, Shne Luchas Avonim Hurid Beyodoi, he brought down two Luchas, and then it goes, tells us about Vasham. What Rabbi Akiv Emden is bothered by is if you say, Khalilti Eres Beroishoi Nosato, Hashem, you gave, you placed a crown on Moshe's head. So why do you need to have the word loy to him? You placed it on his head. What, what's the to him? So now he re-examines this phrase and he says that the word base, the letter base, sorry, sometimes is instead of not in, but to. Like be Moshe Diber. Is actually le Moshe Diber. He spoke to Moshe. Uvadover hazer einchem maminim. That you don't believe badover hazer means you don't believe le dover hazer. And so it it can the word the the base. Uh, you have also or, or be on behalf of or for now Yaakov of Eno. It says uve isha shomor. He guarded the sheep of love on be isha in order that he should acquire his wife. And therefore, he says the following. Hashem made a crown which would be suitable for, which would be fitting for Moshe. It's not as if Hashem actually took a physical crown and put it on Moshe's head. Hashem Kivyochel formed a crown, le roishoi, for Moshe, and then nosatoloi. So he, changed, he understands the word beroishoi rather than physical. You place a crown on his head, and therefore the word loy is superfluous. He says, says no, it's in, you made a crown for his head, and you gave it to him. And then he says that also this there's a there's a the, some of the uh, uh, Ashkenazi Rishonim would make numbers, set numbers for how many the wo words there are in a brocha. So Rabbi Akiva Emden says that the letter, the word loy added, fits to the number of words in this paragraph. I did try to find a little bit more about the numbers of paragraph of, of words in the paragraph. I didn't really get to get a, a clarity. I saw a number of several paragraphs together. I didn't go into that. But meanwhile, what I'm just sharing with you is that this word loy, well, Rabbi Yaakov Emden already saw it in Siduri Ashkenazim. And also what I, um, I saw is in all the Siduri Harizal, which were published before the Altarebbe published his Siddur, 
One was in Tafkov Lim Aleph, second Tafkov Lim Ches, third in Tafkov Lim Gimel, the fourth one I don't remember, I think Tafkov Sam, whatever. Around, the fourth one was perhaps later than the Alter Rebbe, but in all the Sidur Arizal, with all the Kabbalah stuff, there it does have the Nusach Loi, and it seems to have been accepted in many Ashkenazi communities, and the Alter Rebbe also followed that. Okay, just a bit of background for that word and a bit of clarity why it's added in, although it's not an earlier. Um, Sidorim. Let's move on. So here a practical thing, and that is, someone writes to me, he was davening at the omelet, and he started coughing. He was, his cough was so persistent that he wasn't able to continue. And so he's asking, would it have been appropriate if someone brought him a glass of water to say bracha shahakal and drink the water and then continue davening? Or should he do the respectable thing and bow out and let someone else take over? And this question could be in Chazor Shahat, it could be early on in davening. We were, I, I looked up my notes from a couple of years ago. We had a discussion about a person who uh, needs to drink very often. Is he allowed to sip water during uh, during Sukkot Zimra, etc. And I found uh, at the time, and you have a reference here in the, if you have the notes, you have a reference to a Sefer Sherlin Bedoshin, Volume Ches, and he allows the sipping of water during Sukkot Zimra, I was saying a bracha before. So my reaction to this question, whether he's allowed to make a bracha, shahakal, a midrash, monestra, is actually, you don't make a bracha on water unless you're thirsty. But if you needed to swallow something, let's say you're having a pill, a tablet, and you needed some water to swallow the tablet, you don't make a brocha, because water is only a considered a benefit and enjoyment when you're thirsty. If it were a lemonade or, or, or orange juice, yes. But if it's water, so we can read that, we have it from the Alter Rebbe's um, Say the Birch Sanenin, it's Peg Zayin, Aloha Zayin. The water, the bracha said on water before and after is only if you're drinking because you're thirsty. But if you had something which you are eating, the word lugmo means like um, um, something which you like legimo uh, you're chewing something, whatever, and it got stuck in your throat. Then you have something stuck in your throat for this, and you have water, you don't make a brocha, neither before nor after. Because the benefit, the enjoyment in water is only if you're thirsty. If you're not thirsty, then it's not considered an enjoyment. And back to therefore, I don't see any difference between a uh, something stuck in the throat or having a cough. I believe it's the same thing. So to drink water because you have, you're, you're coughing, I don't think you make a bracha on that. So then comes the question, okay, not a bracha. What about whether he's allowed to drink in the middle of Shwain Asra? So I'd just like to just throw in something. What would happen if it wasn't Chazar Sashat? It was his own Shwain Asra. And he still has this fit of coughing. He can't give it over to someone else. And I don't see it such a, such a big deal. It's in order to facilitate. You should be able to continue davening. I don't see this as... Uh, I, all right, we're davening, but you're stuck. You can't go further. I think it's it, it's legitimate to have it, to, to sip a bit of water to be able to continue um, in your in your tefillah, in your Let's move on. So now... The next point which I want to share with you is become quite popular of late that people take a, get a coin which was uh, given by the Rebbe to someone and they uh, make from this, they make a piece of jewellery, a necklace and the question is whether it's muksa or not. And then also it can be a question of a dollar from the Rebbe. I just want to throw in there was a time that the Rebbe would give children by the door. This is before the dollars. It was he would give children to put in the pushka. 
And those who were a bit uh, more shrewd would switch with other coins. But then Erev Yom Kippur, particularly, there's like it's a meaning to have plates in the shul for people to give money for stocker, Erev Yom Kippur especially. And there were literally hundreds of plates from the entrance of the shul at the back of the shul 770 till the Rebbe's place. And there was an occasion that it took the Rebbe four oh minutes, 40 minutes to go from the entrance till he came to his place. And each, there's all of the hundreds of plates that the Rebbe was putting in each one. And at some stage, Rabbi Gronel or Shalom comes with another bag of coins because the Rebbe had run out of the coins in, which were in his pocket. And of course, each, each one who has his plate there quickly switched the Rebbe's coins with others. At any rate, there's Or Hashem available coins from the Rebbe and people make them into jewelry. And the question is, at what stage are they demuxified? Yeah. So we have here actually in Simon Shin Gimel, we have a halacha, which is based on a Mishnah in Shabbos, Perik, I think Perik Hey, Perifes, which is taught, this is Bamei Shoyotza. So Perifes, Bishabbos, Alo Ego is Valo Efen. Shayichadose Lekach, Vyotzes Boy. So imagine instead of a button, imagine you have on one side of the garment, you have a big loop. And on the other side, just plain fabric, and you put in it, you put in a, a knot or a stone, a small stone, and then you put the loop around the stone, and that acts as a button, and it holds it in place. I never tried it, but I can I can see how it would work. Remember, like the old duffel coats. So that's what this is. This is this idea to have to use a, a stone. Now, a stone is muksa. So. How could you use a stone? But it says the Shukhan Aruch, Sheikh If you have designated this stone to be used as a button, so then it is no longer muksa. A stone is otherwise muksa, but if you designate it therefore for, for a clothing, it's not muksa. Says the Shukhan Aruch further, Aval ala matbeya, but to use a coin as a button, also lifreif boy, lifreif shabbos. You cannot use a coin as a button on shabbos. The lav bal tiltulhu because it's a money is not permitted to move. Veloi mahani bo yichud, and even designating is not adequate. It's not adequate to demuxify the coin. And then he says, if she wore it from before Shabbos, she's allowed to wear it on Shabbos. Now, on these words where the Shulchan Aruch says veloi mahani bo yichud, I want to just, um, in case you're asking why I'm not bringing the Alter Rebbe, unfortunately. In Simon Shin Gimel, the latter part of the Simon is missing the Alter Rebbe's Shechon Aruch. So where this would be is, is, is in the Alter Rebbe is not there. In our, what we don't we don't have it. Says the Mishtabura, Loi Mahani Shabbos Achas. If you designated the coin for the one Shabbos, then it doesn't lose its Muksa status. It's still a coin. Avalim Yichado Meerev Shabbos Leinyanzeh Lei Oilom. But if the Yichud was not just for the one Shabbos, but you now designated this coin, it's going to be a button. For now, evermore, it's going to be a button. Gamba Matbeya Mahani. Then even a coin can also be no longer, lose its muksa status. The Shuv Ozil Mino is a tiltul. Now, at this point onwards, since we designated to be used as a button, it's no longer muksa. And he quotes two sources. Toys for Shabbos, which is a commentary on the Shukhan Aruch, and Rabbi Kiva Ege, possibly he quotes him. So we have here the Shukhan Aruch, the Shukhan Aruch says a coin is muksa, and you cannot designate it. The Mishnah says you cannot designating for one Shabbos is not good, but if it's designated as a button in, in, indefinitely, then it does work. Hasnish disagrees with him, and he says that even designating the oil was not good enough. Okay. So now, then we have now from the Shmir Shabbos Kehil Chasso. So the um, references are totally off. But okay, I have to deal with that. So uh, Shmir Shabbos Kehil Chasso writes, Matbo is Kesef. 
coins, asimonim, if you remember those tokens which are used for telephones, which are instead of money, and magnetic cards, like uh, credit cards, they are muksa. But then he says, a necklace or a keychain, which has a, a coin connected to it for, for decorative purposes, is muta You may carry it, it's not muksa. He says it's going to stay impermanent. And he's, he's, he's responding in his notes, responding to Nish. Even if you say a coin, that doesn't help to designate it because you may next week change back and use it as a coin. But once you've modified it, you've made it into a keychain, you made it into a, a necklace, then it's going to stay that way. And that's, then he says everyone would agree that it is that it's not muksa anymore. Two points which I want to say. Number one, he seems to say that magnetic cards are muksa. Uh, of course they're muksa, but what level of muksa? You've got what's called klisha malach isr, which you are allowed to move the serhgu from a koimai, a tool. If you want to use, improvise with it to do a permitted activity, that's okay. Then you have something which is not a tool, and that's what, like a stone. That's that's called a muksa gomer. So to use a stone to hold the store open, to hold the door open, that's not allowed because it's not a keili. To use a screwdriver to hold the door open is mutsa. That's called a serhgu for mekayim. Money, I said in the class, I said to the Talmidos, money is useless. It's nothing you cannot do. It's not made for doing any skill. It's not made for fixing. It's not made for eating. It's not made. It's it's, it's not like a knife and fork or a a a, a, a hammer. It's not a tool. Money is just a means for barter, for exchange, of value, but it doesn't have a, a use. Not At least it's not made for a use. Credit cards, by contrast, I believe are, are basically keys. It's a key to, to get to access money out of the machine, to access, to, to, to access your, your, your details, where you, what, how much you are in credit, or has for shalom for care. But it, it's a key. So I just see a, a credit card as a klisha malach is, and therefore no difference to a, to a hammer or a screwdriver. See, if I wanted to use a credit card, let's say, to be able to push open a lock or something, a latch, I think that would be mutter, like, like no difference to a screwdriver. Okay. Be that as it may, but it seems to be quite, quite uh, clear that when a coin is made into a into a uh, piece of jewelry, for sure it loses its muksa, if it's not, if it's just been placed into a locket or something, then also the Mr. Burris takes the view that it's not muksa. Although, as you see, others I uh, mentioned are not so confident because it can still be used as money. Interesting. I remember in the Argus catalog, they used to have in the um, jewelry section, they used to have a kind of locket which was a necklace, and it had like a ten-pound note folded up, and you could see see the um, just the, the head of the queen, Alea um, uh, Shalom. And it was like, like if someone's out for the night and then they need to have taxi money, they can take it out and use the money. So I've, I've been teaching that this, this is muksa, and I think that is actually true because it's, uh, even as it's made into a piece of jewelry, but the kavana is that if you're desperate for cash, you have some cash with you. Right, so now let's go to the uh, second question though. About about banknotes, about a dollar. So, is a dollar the same as a coin? So, the there's a reference I have here to a sefer called Migdonis El Yahu, Rav Rubinstein, who was very short-lived. Rav of Antwerp died very suddenly. Um, his 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 forum are really. Very, very gishmakas for him, as I can see just online, um, whatever. Now, he says that mm, he discusses this whole thing about coins, being uh, coins from a tzaddik. And then he says, what about money, um, cash, um, uh, banknotes? Shtoris Kesev, he quotes the Minchas Shabos and says it's muksu machmas chesor and kis. And therefore, especially if it's a, if a kesef from a rebbe, for sure, it should be muksa al smach muksa mach muschasar and kiss. So he makes 
the, the banknotes more muksa than the coins. Now, on the left of the screen, you can see this is the from the Minchas Shabbos, uh, which is a safer on Kitzur Shechon Aruch, and he talks about money in in note form, pizutin. I don't remember which kind of language that is. Bankova biletin, banknotes. So he says it should be kumuksa machmas of sarin kis. The kolshikein hum in your cholok, your blank paper is muksa machmas of sarin kis for sure. Uh, banknotes. So. It reminded me that Reb Nussin Vogel Olav Shalom once told me, or perhaps one of his children told me, that as a kid, a young boy, he lost a five-pound note. And it was just like, it looked like a plain piece of white, white piece of paper. And he lost it in the street, and he was walking through the street looking for this piece of paper, like along, 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 amongst all the litter which was in the street. So I did a bit of a search online, and you can see on the screen a five-pound note, which was launched in 1855, and they write it was still in circulation until 1957, which fits the years when he was a young boy. And so a five-pound note was a piece of paper, and it had a written, you know, printed, that I promised to pay the bearer on demand of five pounds, Signed by the bank, uh, bank of England, the chief officer, whatever it may be. I can understand such a piece of paper. I would not want to put down a cup of coffee. I have a nice polished table, and I don't want to ruin the surface. I wouldn't. I, I, unless I put down a piece of something, a coaster, I wouldn't put such a banknote because it might get spoiled. I can tell you, today, a five-pound note, a ten-pound note. I'm sure 50 pound not, not, but the 10 pound, $10. If I need to put down a, a, a cup of coffee and I've got a 10 per, only a 10, $10, I don't care if it gets dirty, gets crumpled, who cares? So I don't think that banknotes are muksemachmas chesor and kiss. The word muksemachmas chesor and kiss means that it's something which is designated for a purpose and you would not improvise with it. So a shoychet has a knife and he spends hours and hours honing it. Then, to go and cut a piece of string or to cut a piece of card, he's not going to do that because it's it's put in so much effort, so much invested. So he's not going to ruin that, and so on. So, kiss means it's such a um, prized object that you would not improvise with it. That's the word of Muqsmach, and that's why it's Muqs. In addition, the Alter Rebbe takes the view that Muxmach Chosorin Kis is not only the value, but also it's a Klisha Malach Tilis. Okay. So coming back, what, 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 so Muxmach Chosorin Kis is like a Muxagom, where you can't, you're not allowed to improvise with it. If it's just a Klisha Malach Tilis, so you are allowed to improvise with it. It'll circle from a coin. Therefore, what I'm seeing is, I think in nowadays, a a banknote, I would say, say is not muks mach moschasar and kiss. Um, it's klisha malach teliyse. If you needed the space, so then you'd be allowed to. And my say, yeah, I mean, I said this over last night, but the one of the rabbonim of the present, he says, I don't see the tzorich to move on Shabbos. Who needs to move the um, the, the rebbe's dollar? You need to, well, you'd have to move on Shabbos. And if it is a klisha malach teliyse. Then just to show it off to your friends, I don't think would be okay. That's that's not let's say go for Um It may be something else, but I don't see it. it's not let's say go for So I, I, I don't see it as as a such a strong muksa. If you needed the space, you need to, to move it because you don't want to lose it. That would pack up here. If the klisha nacht is to be also, what happens if you've laminated it? I've always been. Not so sure about this. I, I I think that if you would take a a hundred dollar bill which is laminated and go to the bank and ask them to put it to your credit, I don't think they have a uh, reason to refuse it. And therefore, it's still money. All right. The point I have actually I received from the Rebbe Tanya Tovshin Membeis this thick Tanya and it had a dollar inside it, so I took some cello tape and stuck it in place. I used the Tanya on Shabbos also. But I don't handle the dollar. But it's, it's, what I'm saying is, it doesn't have the muksa machmas for sorry kiss, but um, still to handle it, it's still a, it is money. 
and it hasn't been changed, it hasn't lost its value. And therefore, I think it still is muksa, uh, at least as a is uh, Is there any difference if it's plasticated? I'm not so convinced, actually. Yeah. I'm not so convinced. Um, although you can take the view that the like the Mishtabura has said, and like the Shabbos Kochosa has said, if you're miyachid it liyoilam, you miyachid it as what? If you if you make that dollar into a piece of jewelry, I understand you change its status. But if you say it's a rebus dollar and you what have you made it into now? The fact you've plasticated it, I don't see it changing it from being a dollar and a piece of, uh, you know, currency. Let's go. In any case, all right, it's not really, it's gishmake in your name, it's, it's, but it's not necessarily lamaisi. Lamaisi, you put it in a, keep it in one place and d d you don't move it on Shabbos. There's a lot in the Gemara. Because we have a theory, that doesn't mean we go and carry out lamaisa. Okay. What else do we have here? So here is a un non not Lubavitch Shiloh. Someone says they don't think the bank would accept a laminated dollar. All right, if they don't accept, I would say I want to speak to the manager before. I call Bonnie, let's move on. Um, someone asked me, Polish in Germany, Davin's in our show quite often, and he asks me, he's in to say, I'm Lava Malka, sorry, he's only going to say every meal of Shabbos, the Kovach Shabbos Kodesh, you know, Polish Yidden, such a minig. And every, oh, I don't know, all Polish, but it's a quite widespread. The Kobach is Kodesh. So he asks now, what about Malav and Malka? Should he be saying, or is it out of order to say, the Kobach is Kodesh at Malav and Malka? So first of all, I said, you know, the past is, am I eating Malav and Malka if not for the Kobach Shabbos? But here is a fascinating sikha. This is in Chelek Lamed Vav. Pashas Beshalach. And the Rebbe picks up, it talks here in Simen Shin, very short Simen Alter in Shukhan Aruch. And in the Mechaba, it's just a mamash of one line. And uh, the Alter Rebbe is three, four, see if him. Talks here about whether you should cut back in your Surah Shlishis to, have it, to make it earlier so that you should be able to eat Malav Malka. And he says, you don't have to make your Surah Shlishis earlier because this Surah of Malav Malka ain't no choiva kol kach. Elo mitzvah min amuvcha bilvat. And the Rebbe is uncomfortable with that lotion, Elo mitzvah min amuvcha. If you want to diminish, say it's not so important, so you'd say, Eino Elo mitzvah bialma. Mitzvah min amuvcha is actually building it up rather than diminishing it. So why does the Yalta Rebbe use Eino Elo, Eino Choyva Kokach, Elo mitzvah min amuvcha? It's a choice. And he goes into the whole discussion about the posuk. And the Gemara says, that on Friday came down enough supply of mon for two days. He sanctified the day that, 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 that mon didn't come down on the day of Shabbos. So now let's focus on the two day supply of the mon. So every day, people tend to eat a day meal and a night meal. I know in England it's also meaning to have also 11s and to have scones and tea at 3 p.m. But I'm talking about uh, back in the days of the midboard, they had a day meal and night meal. Okay, So they had a double portion of morn on Fridays. So one portion was for the day meal on Friday, one was for Friday night. Then they had the Shabbos, the second um, Oy for the Shabbos. So one was for the day meal. So you said the second one they had for Siddish Lishis. Wait a minute. If people are used to eating a supper at night, to say that they eaten during their 40 years in, in the midbar, when it came night, they had nothing to eat, doesn't really make sense. And it, therefore it follows that they had, like every other day of the week, they had also enough for Siddish Lishis. But they had also a Motsa Shabbos meal. So now the Rebbe says that although the Kedusha Shabbos is finished the moment Shabbos goes out, but the Bir Shabbos continues even afterwards. So you've got the baby, yeah? And therefore the Rebbe explains 
That's why the Alter Rebbe refers to it as mitzvah mun hamuvche. Why is it not just a separate thing? He says zachelik of the of the three meals, and the kiyu mit gimels mit gimel sudas. The mevur mitzvah hamuvche when you eat the three meals, and you also have melava malke, then you are expressing your remembrance of the Be'er Chibimon. The Be'er Chibimon was also for, for the for the motzeh, for, for the night meal. And that's that, in other words, he's saying that the Lava Malka brings out the Shleimus of the Sudas Shabbos. So coming back to the question, could you, should you say, if you say in Kovit Shabbos, Kodesh, I'm thinking now perhaps to say the Kovit Shabbos, not Shabbos Kodesh, because the Kodesh is ready gone already once Motzei Shabbos, but at least it is still, it's, 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 it's certainly, we eat Malav Malka, it's L'Kovet Shabbos, I don't think that's that's out of order. A uh, couple of points here. If you have Mezoinus on, someone's asking, Malav Malka, is it still considered a Suda? Mitzvah is it a must to wash if I'm not so hungry? Is, see the Sheed is asking the question, and I can tell you that Yoide Dova say that there were times that the Rebbe, for whatever reason, didn't have Hamoitzi on Shabbos, and Motzah Shabbos it was Choyk Veloyavim. By the Rebbe, Motzah Shabbos to have Mlav Malka was something which he, Dafka washing. It's, uh, and, you know, part of it is, <laughs> you know, there's the, um, the Etzim Luz is nourished by Mlav Malka. And the Etzim Luz, the Gemara says, doesn't have Hanor from Elohaz. It comes, you so how, how does this work? Dafke because Motsa Shabbos. You've already eaten three meals, you're not hungry. So why are you eating? Just because of the mitzvah. Ah, so it's not because you are enjoying, it's because of the mitzvah. That's why the Etzim Luz has Hanoi from it. Because it's a, it's, it's a Suda, which is not the Shem Agash Muzdika Hanoi, it's just the Shem Shemaim. That's why the Etzim Luz is nourished from such a Suda. So, Right. Um, so now, just out of Shabbos, someone asked me, I was short of questions, so Baruch Hashem, another few questions came in, about the repeated verses in Davening, and he mentioned three, um, five places. In Halel, sorry, Hashem Melech, Akilan Shomo, Oz Yoshir, Yoshi Veseser, and Halel. So, I'll try to chaparain in the next uh, few minutes. Uh, hopefully we'll finish in time. So here we have in Simen, in Shukhan Aruch, it is in Simen Nun Aleph. Um, so we have Noyag in Lichpoil, Koil and Shomo to Halal Yudke. Why do we say that Posuk twice? The Pishu Soy Psukhid Zimro, because it's the end of the Psukhid Zimro. So we repeat it kind of to, to, to celebrate. We, we've, we've finished now. My Machshova Zori is like this similar to Moshul in Mavasedre of repeating the last Posuk. It might not be the same Indian. There is Afshal Asayim Betoyre. Okay, then also it says Shachnoruch to repeat the Pasuk Hashem Yimlech Lo'elam at the end of the Shira because that's the end of the Shira. As you know, they say the Torah, the Shira is written in a different way with lots of spaces, like Oriach Agabe Leveno. So the la the last of um, phrase of the Shira is Hashem Yimlech Lo'elam Void. Then you have Kim um, Kibosus Pare. That's after the Shira. So we repeat that posuk Hashem Yimlech Lo'elam Voyeh because that's the end of the Shira. Although we say the posuk of Kivosus Pare afterwards, another discussion. It says Yesh Mosifin Kivosus Posuk Kivosus Pare. Some say that because that's also from the Shira, and that's really a debate. It refers to Yerdeya whether Kivosus Pare is technically part, a part of the Shira. Okay, in the note which you have here on the on the bottom, that's from the Sidur Habo Alein Lotoivo. In, and so on um, on this spot. So you have here from the Lavush, he has another reason that the 12 psukim correspond to how many times we uh, say halal in Rosh Chodesh, and the repeat is corresponding to halal in a Shona Mubaris. And the yours truly has a note, but actually on Rosh Chodesh Tishri, we don't say halal. Okay. Now, what about saying um, Hashem? So this is for Hashem Melech. So by the by Ashkenazim, Hashem Melech is not said before um, um, uh, in, on a weekday. Apparently, it's said on Shabbos and Yom Tov. The Bishyosef 
says it's my customer to say it and twice, and he gives a reference why we say Hashem Mel twice. He gives a reference to Tikkun Ezoya. So last night I spent a long time trying to find in Tikkun Ezoya, but I have the print which has got the Bir Hagro and it's a different pagination. But today I managed to find it. So before we read further, someone just asked, is it Chabad Minik to repeat the Pasuk in, in, in uh, Shnai Mikro? There's something in the Rishimus, in the Rishimus which we released after Gimel Tammuz. And there, there's something about not repeating. But it is ambiguous. And I'll tell you what the ambiguity is. You can see you know, now some of these um, Shnai Mikros for him. At the end of Shnai Mikro, they say the last posuk twice, then Targum, and then again twice the last posuk. So in other words, four times. So when it says in the Rishimus of the Rebbe, does it mean we don't say it a third time or that we don't say it a fourth time? It's not clear. And uh, therefore, I've, uh, I've, I've continued saying it once. As in other words, as a third time, but not a fourth time. Okay, let's come back to the, the Hashem Melech. So it was a reference to the Tikkun Zoyar, and this is in Tikkun Ayin. Uh, it's in Kabbalah, and I could have just said it's Alpi Kabbalah, but I'm I'm curious. I want to share my my findings with you. It's still going to be Kabbalah, but he talks about here our Antfini Lo in the upper branches, middle branches, uh, mid medium branches, and the lower branches. And he says you've got the upper ones are like the fathers, and the the middle ones are like the Memanon, the uh, the officers, and the lower ones is like the Shluchin. The, the, and they, they, the um, ones were sent out on missions. And then he talks about how you have basically Hashem Melech, Hashem Melech, Hashem Yimloich is connecting, um, I, I believe it is uh, on uh, in a higher level of Ba'am, of, um, perhaps Chabad and uh, Chochman and um, Yud and the Hay, uh, Elyon. And then you have a second Yichud, which is the second Hashem Melech. Um, that's basically what he's saying. I used this morning. I used the um, there's this Pirush Mosuk Mitvash. So he explains this a little bit. Basically, it's two levels of, of Yichud, and therefore you have Hashem Melech, Hashem Melech, Hashem Yimlech twice for those two levels. About the Nikudas, which you can see over here, we have discussed this in the past at great length of how you have the Segols, the two letters with Segols. And that equals um, the same letters, same Nikudas as Melech, and then the Pasachs, and then the Malach, and then the, the Shvo Choylem Kome, Shvo, well, Shkhirik Choylem Shvo, the same uh, letters as Yimloich. I'm not going to go into the whole discussion, it's going to take a lot of time. And if someone's interested, I can find where did we discussed it in the past, and you can look it up and uh, you know, follow it online. Um, I see a couple of points here. Why would it be necessary to eat bread for Etzim Luz? Well, it says it's Nizoin. It's Nizoin from Lav Malka. So, uh, oh, you have some white Afka bread. All right. Dafka Val Milvilnish, yeah. Couldn't be bothered. Yeah, it said, wait, look at Shukhanor, Simon Shin. It's a to be my to prepare a suda and to have a special tafshil, to have the table set. I know in America, you know, there's manas there, people go shopping on Matzah Shabbos. So uh, we're losing it. We, we learned that, that that there's a certain gishmak of uh, you don't want to take leave of Shabbos. So you have a Matzah Shabbos, you have the table set with a nice tablecloth, and uh, uh, you know, you relax. What's, what's the rush? Yeah, yeah let's go right. Then, so that was, we addressed the Hashem Melech's, I know it's still Kabbalah, Chelan Shoma, and the end of, and Hashem Yimlech knows Yoshe, because it's the end of, Sukhazim, end of the Shira, Yoshe B'Seser. So here we have in Shukhan Aruch, um, this is in Reish Tadik Heim, we didn't want to Shabbos, it's customary to say, Bihi Noyam, at the end, or after Mairev, and that's the Brocha, when the Mishkan was built, look, it's again, in Yonah de Yoyme, when the Eden finished making the Mishkon, so Moshe Rabbeinu gives them a blessing. He noyam Hashem aleikeinu aleinu. 
that Hashem, the pleasantness of Hashem would be, should be bestowed upon us. That which we do with our hands should be stable and it should be effective, etc. The Pashtun says you're going to a week of, of, of back to a week of work. And therefore, you ask Hashem's brocha that your week of work should be successful, which is also the reason why we don't say it when there's a yom to the middle of the week, because you don't have a whole week of Masi Yodain. Fine. But meanwhile, there's also the minhig of adding Yoshi Vesayser, and to also repeat the posuk Oyrich Yomim. And this, al yedeikach nishlam Hashem ayoytzi mimenu. And by having the additional Oyrich Yomim twice, that completes the Shem, which is the Hashem's name, or the Remes, which is through saying. So, so, of course, we're all curious what that's all about. This is a letter of the Rebbe on the lower part of the screen, um, quoting the Zohar. There's what's called Shir Shel Pagoim. Yoshu as is said by Levi and Sangedach, um, which I'm sorry also to share with you, that uh, over just Erev Shabbos, Rebbe... Um, Michael Rabin passed away. Um, Chaim Shmuel Mendel, I don't know what his father's name is. Um, hopefully the Levi will be tomorrow sometime. At, all, at any rate, by the Levi, when says the um, Yeshiva says, so that's a shir shop goyim, a form of protection. But then the Rebbe further on, he brings, and obviously our condolences to his brother, who is normally uh, a very regular participant in the shir, Supported, sponsored many, many times. Uh, so wish him arichas yomim and nechama. So coming back, so the mizmor has got a hundred and thirty words, and that's the skula. There's a number of a hundred and thirty. So I was curious, what's the significance of a hundred and thirty? So there is a, there is a, uh, a nasty malach known, in short, as the samach mem. So his full name is Samach Mem Aleph Lamed. And he's a troublemaker. And some, that's 131. Samach Mem Aleph Lamed is 131. And so the Shem HaOyotzi Memenu is, to, we want to have the number of 130, somehow, I guess, um, to be Machtim, Refu Olamakot, that we should have a protection that he shouldn't have a, a shlita. So that's the uh, cheshben of the of the uh, Yeshiv Seser and adding the last posuk twice. And that's again going into a week of activity as we don't want the, that that malach to cause us trouble during our uh, our activities during the coming week. Why do we repeat the phrases in this latter part of Halil? That is. Uh, with this, this should be our last thing. So someone's asking why 130. Yeah, good, good to cash. So ima koilu. So the last phrases of Halel were said by several people. We just learned this in Psochim uh, towards the end of Gemara Psochim, and we have that Kufya test that they had here when when Shmuel Hanovi comes to the house of Yishai, and he asks for the various sons, and, he, and then each one is not suitable. And then it comes to David, who was actually wasn't even home. He was looking after the sheep. And then he was he gives him the brocha. So there he gives and anoints him. So, Sony, Hashem, uh, I praise you because you answered me, said David. Even more the stone which was despised, despised by the builders becomes the cornerstone. This was Yishai. He sees the son who was despised by his all his brothers, now has become anointed as a melech, so he says this, this pasuk. Me'es Hashem oisha zois, the brothers could see clearly this is from Hashem, so they they acknowledged. Zeha yoy mosa Hashem, Shmuel is so happy that he's now managed to find uh, the uh, a replacement for for as a new new king. Zeha yoy mosa Hashem. The brothers say, oh no Hashem ashiyano, you can say tongue in cheek, they were worried. Hashem ashiyano. David is also anxious on Hashem at Then um, Baruch Habor B'Shem Hashem is said by Yishai, greeting Shmuel, who had come from the Beis HaMikdosh, Shmuel, from the Mishkan rather, Shmuel, who is, has come from the Mishkan, Be'erach Nuchem Mi Beis Hashem, I'm giving a broche uh, from Beis Hashem, Kel Hashem Vayor Lonu, Hashem has 
given his as his light. It was said by all of them. Isru Chag Ba'avoysim was said by Shmuel. Keli Ata Bo'ideko was said by David. And Lekaya Arim Mameko was said by all of them. So what we're seeing here that these psukim from Oydecho till the end of Halil was a whole conversation at the time of the uh, anointment of David. Says the Gemara. Here we have Tanyo Rebi Koifil Bodvorim. Rebbe Loze Ben Parto Moisif Bodvorim. My Moisif Lich Moi Ababai Moisif Lich Poil Meoid Cholamato. So Rebbe Loze Ben Parto would, from Oid Chol onwards, he would repeat the Psukim. Says the Rashbam on the space, on the other place. Um, in honor and recognition that this is a whole conversation between Yushai and Shmuel and David and the brothers this whole conversation which is on the previous page over there therefore the reason why we repeat is to remember that these phrases were it's a whole conversation, although the repetition doesn't add to it. It just, it just brings our attention that there's something special about these psukim. That's the background for the repetition of those psukim in Halal. So I've actually gone over time. And so uh, I wish you all a gutavoch. And we should see a geula shleimo. And will they be able to say, oidcho, Hashem ki onafto be. And... Uh, we should see a, a Yeshua Shlema for all of Kal Yisrael, B'chol Mokim Shehem, especially the Eden in Eretz HaKodesh, and B'chol Mokim Shehem. Kol Tov, Agot Tovach.